best speaking to the microphone. Oh, it works. Yes. Yeah, that's the name of my poem, Strong Cover Band. <laughs> watch the movies or write a poem about them, and they, Twitter said I should write a poem about them. Um, everything I know about Star Wars from songs and internet memes. And, um, okay. so this is it. Long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was light, there was dark, there were no shades of grey, and a war was beginning, and stars were being made, though I don't know their names or the roles that they play. I noticed some were Ewoks, Stormtroopers and Wookiees, and Jedi Knights, harder ones, Masters and Rookies, uh, Darth Vader, C-3PO, R2-D2, but Einstein couldn't name them, so don't expect me to. There were Chewie and Yoda, the OSV talker, um, Han Solo, Leia, of course, Luke Skywalker. Uh, there were um, X-Wings and uh, Cruisers, Starships Deluxe, um, and uh, I actually forgot the word, but I'll try to think of another kind of... Oh, and Cut Racers, Lance Peters, then in five bucks, get your Net Star. That's the sound of a Death Star. <laughs> but you can't hear it because it's in space. Um, that and five bucks will get you a Death Star. It looks like a moon, but it's some kind of space station dealing out doom. You would think it would blow up the good guys, but no. For some reason, this one's a cinch to blow up. Now, I'm not sure which digression comes next. <laughs> I digress. There's a thing called the force Luke must use. For the good side or bad, he's the one you must choose. Um, side note. Perfect. Side note. Midichlorians, not the force goes on, are force mitochondria, some kind of boson. So may it be with you, it's stronger in this one, whose lack of faith hints that there's something amiss. But I think Obi-Wan puts it on the right track? That's a guess. I don't know who he is. Don't attack. 
I'm a little unsure how the plot goes from there and actually how the poem goes from there, but we'll just hope that's the next line. How the plot goes from there, but it's not like I'm bumbling around unawares. I know what a, a mind trick or lightsaber is for, and I know that they're not the droids you're looking for. If they sleep in a torn torn, then uh, someone won't freeze. And for Palpatine's sake, Wookiees spelt with two E's. And it's Han that shot first, not, um, Guido? No, Guibo, he couldn't shoot first at a wounded gazebo. So the guy named Darth Vader, who breathed through a mask, like most of us do now, uh, he, his wardrobe's all dark side, you don't need to ask. Uh, well, he tries to convince the young Luke to turn bad, but then, spoiler alert, he says, Hey, I'm your dad. And the princess is somehow Luke Skywalker's sister, but nobody talks about how he once kissed her. So he vanquished his father, who, looking quite gaunt, while wheezing, could still somehow scream, Do not go! This poem may suck, but it beats Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> so um, I met Joey here on the 2017 cruise, um, and Joey actually set this poem to music. So if you didn't catch something there, or if I maybe got it totally wrong, who knows, um, Joey's now going to sing it. <laughs> We're going to do the old one mic maneuver, which I just named. That's my mic Furman cover. Long, long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was light, there was dark, there were no shades of gray, and a war was beginning, stars were being made, and I don't know their names or the roles that they play. I know some were Ewoks, Stormtroopers Troopers or Wookiees, Jedi Knights, Padawans, Masters and Rookies, Darth Vader, C-3PO, and R2-D2. But Einstein couldn't name them, so don't expect me to. There were Chewie and Yoda, the OSB Talker, Han Solo and Leia, and of course Luke Skywalker, Cloud Racers, Falcons, and Starships Deluxe, and cruisers and land speeders, had and my bucks will get you a Death Star that looks like a moon, but it's some kind of space station dealing up you. You would think it would wipe out the good guys, but no. For some reason, this one's a cinch to blow up. Well, this guy named Darth Vader who breathes through a mask. His wardrobe's on dark side, you don't need to ask. And he tried to convince the young Luke to turn bad, but then... Spoiler alert. Said, hey, I'm your dad. And the princess was somehow Luke Skywalker's sister, but nobody talks about how he once kissed her. He vanquished his father, who looking quite gaunt, while wheezing could still somehow scream. Do not want... The end. And I don't care what anyone thinks. Perhaps this song sucks, but it beats Jar Jar Binks. So I saw this on YouTube um, where Joey posted it. Um, by the way, uh, Joey has Joey's accent has the court court merger, so that makes gaunt rhyme with want, which doesn't work for me. So it's good um, and. I posted on the YouTube video, holy crap, I just saw this, so awesome, can you follow me around and sing everything I say? And then I did the, the colon D smiley like this. Uh, and then Joey responded with this. Holy crap, I just saw this, so awesome, can you follow me around and sing everything I say? Colon D. Um, and then a little bit later, 
I wrote a parody of the Jonathan Colton song Glasses, which you might have heard at the show last night, um, which Joey also sang, and I don't even have to read this one because it's a song parody, so I'm just going to let Joey sing it. Um, Joey also did this at Open Mic in 2018. To what's hiding in plain sight. Shake the blankets out, time some old tough doubt, never finding the clarity abandoned late last night. I had them then, don't know where they are. I found that I'll check again. Mountains and morasses without a lens, can't see near or far. I can't see, I can't find my glasses. Check atop my head, the small print book I read. Check the old corner where they never are and never ought to be. Be careful where I step, walk the floor except. It's all a blur, a crude moving blotch of who knows what to be. I had them then, don't know where they are. I'll check again, mountains and morasses without a lens. Can't see near or far, I can't see. No LASIK please. Don't want my eyeballs cooking Still can't see Guess I'll just keep on looking Not their usual place Not here on my face I know they're bound to be somewhere I've already looked three times Find my old car keys, the old utilities, a cat's fresh drop in, a Lego brick, a quarter and be gone. I've had them then, don't know where they are. I'll check again, mountains and morasses, without a lens, can't see near old car. I had them then, don't know where they are. I'll check again, mountains and morasses, without a lens, can't see near old car. I can't see. I can't find my glasses. You don't wear glasses, Joey. Um, so then, uh, at some point, I, I there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pop songs out there. The, the gist of it is basically, I love your body. It looks like it has a comfortable place for me to put my journals. And then there's kind of this counter uh, thing of, of like supposedly body positive songs which are my body is not the fashionable shape but actually my body shape is the fashionable body shape and, and all of you people with fashionable bodies are, are the bad ones and I feel like this still kind of is treating the body like a piece of meat and not the things that you should love your body for. So uh, I wrote a poem uh, called I Love Your Body, which goes like this. I love your body, the way it keeps you alive. I've already forgotten. Uh, the way it lets you touch me, the way it lets us communicate, the way it gives you pleasant sensations. I don't love its flaws, the way it hurts you, the way it makes you sick, the way it makes you tired, the way it won't do the things that you want it to. But I love that you have it, so that I can have you. Because brains need energy, and there's no ESP that would show you to me. I love your body. I hope it takes care of you, and you of it, for a love-filled lifetime. Um, so then, Joey actually said that to music, um, which you can hear it. Um, I love your body. Oh, sorry. I don't love this volume. I love what's that? <laughs> tag staff, tag staff. I love your body. The way it keeps you alive. The way it lets me touch you. The way it lets us communicate, 
the way it gives you pleasant sensations. I don't love its flaws. The way it hurts you. The way it makes you sick. The way it makes you tired. The way it can't do the things that you want it to. But I love that you have it so that I can have you. Because brains need energy, and there's no ESP that would show you to me. I love your body. I hope it takes care of you, and you of it, for a love-filled lifetime. So I saw this on, on Joey's YouTube and I commented, it's squee, I love the way your body turns words into sound. And uh, Joey responded with this. I love your lyrics, the way they make me smile, the way they touch me from afar. The way they don't always have to rhyme The way they give me pleasant sensations So then I responded I love that comment The way it makes me squee The way it hints that you like me the way it suggests that this line needn't turn to two rhymes into a triplet. The way it gives me pleasant sensations. I don't know if you can tell um, from those comments, um, but by this time I had quite a crush on Joey. Um, if you couldn't tell, Joey, Joey couldn't tell either. Um, but I, I did mention it on January 2018 because we were going to go to a convention together after the cruise, and uh, spoiler alert, we got married about nine days ago. Um, um, so we started dating on the 2018 cruise, and uh, Joey was quite often singing Tom Lehrer's song, I Hold Your Hand in Mine, to me. And if you know that song, uh, maybe you'll understand where this second version of I Love Your Body came from that I wrote after that. I love your body The way it feels like silk The way it looks good naked The way it smells like your perfume The way it tastes so good In a casserole <laughs> I don't love its flaws The way its flesh resists my knife The way its bones won't decompose The way it won't fit in my freezer The way its leftovers putrefied And made my neighbor suspicious And she called the police And there was a highly publicized trial <laughs> And now I'm in prison for life Con, uh, on a five-day train journey and then a convention. That was, that was sort of our first date. Um, and uh, as you do on the first dates, uh, we, we discussed where we were on the Kinsey scale. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, basically that goes from zero to six. If you're a zero, you're um, 
exclusively heterosexual, and if you're sex, you're exclusively homosexual, and it could be anywhere in between. Um, so uh, Joey was reluctantly a one, wanted to be a higher number because uh, gender shouldn't even be a thing, let alone the most important uh, the most important thing you look for in a partner. Um, so. A couple of years later, um, I wrote a song based on that, um, which I, I mean, I, I wrote the, lyric, the, the tune to this, so it's, it's kind of repetitive, but it's short. Um, I'm not sure I remember the words I'm going to book. Um, this is about jelly, by the way, but it might not be 100% accurate. Um, I don't know. He was not quite as queer as he wanted to be, but he was into girls and he was into me. Cause, and the question was what kind of person was he, cause he wasn't a girl that he wanted to be. It was not the big deal that it's wanted to be, well it wasn't to him and it wasn't to me. And the answer was clear, a kind of person was he. And this all would still rhyme if that he were a she. And then you can sing the whole thing again with the he's and the she's reversed, but that would be kind of boring. So I'm not going to do that. Um, what's next? Okay, so there's a poem that um, I've done at a lot of open mics and at, at my shadow show last year, and it's I made a poster of it. You might have all heard it before. Um, uh, it's about um, the, the saying, if I have seen farther, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, that is attributed to Isaac Newton, but it's actually been said by various people from the 12th century onwards, which made me think that maybe that was not quite accurate. Um, because I've done this one several times before and you might have already heard it. I'm just going to let Joey do the sound version of it and then I have a, a, a sequel to it which I haven't performed anywhere before. So, um, yeah, if, if the song is boring, we get that next. If I have seen farther, the scientists said, it's not because I am a giant. Great minds of the past have helped me get ahead. It's their shoulders on which I'm reliant. Now listen to me, said the great, on whose shoulder the first one was glad to have stood. I'm quite sure of stature, it's just that I'm older and those before me were so good. That one was perched on the neck of a giantess of great renown Who balanced and turned on another by heck It's little guys all the way down And some were thought giants and some were thought midgets And some were thought nothing at all But each would insist those below were no widgets It's them that have made me so tall Rambling around them, their fans would aspire to see something not seen before. By climbing the tower of dwarves, never higher for glimpses or footholds or more. Most could not scale to the summit in time before their peak fitness would end. Some found it tough and abandoned the climb, while some would with fitter descend. Where that such heights were so taxing to reach, they helped to lift people in hopes, inventing new ladders and platforms to teach, securing and showing the ropes. They might not be giants, but they must go far, and that journey isn't for me. I'll boost them for science, raise them in the bar, and profit from what they will see. So said the teacher while lifting a child On shoulders so humble and stressed The youth saw a vista that had them beguiled And bound it straight up to the crest um, 
Uh, this is the another one that was that Joey sang in 2017 before I had admitted my crush, and I commented on the YouTube with a, a sparkly heart emoji, and Joey responded with a sparkly heart emoji, but um, was not actually yet aware of the depths of my heart struggles. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be explicit about these things, or at least in my case, raise an hypothetical. Um, so this is a sequel to that. It's called Move Mountains. You've spent many decades climbing giant shoulders of the past, learning how they built up each new fact upon the last. You've pushed up through adversity to see far in the distance, the mountains of diversity, the range of all existence. You may look down on scrappy youth and other mountain ranges, unaware that sacred fundamental knowledge changes, and scorn them for their ignorance of what you always knew, the basic facts you've built upon that clearly still are true, ignoring any inkling that the ignorant is you. Emerging paths to surer ground can only reinforce, it's just as well that you're around, they stumble and change course. Yet to find their footing, and yet they urge you down, preaching of a landslide in the rock you know is sound. The ways they work at paving smooth are easy to dismiss as slippery slopes that lead to darkened depths of the abyss. But fossilized analyses, deep rooted in sunk cost, will sink you into fallacies while higher truths are lost. Some, while digging deeper, at receding clouds will shout while some discard their baggage to climb out. The smart will seek to find, the wise will find, and yet still seek. Continue climbing patiently through trials and critique. The wisest can move mountains to a more well-founded peak. Uh, so I, I just wrote that one very recently, and by, by this time, you know, um, we're, we were already engaged, and uh, I think Joey had written a tune for it by the next morning, so um, I'll let you sing it. Or, or were you not going to sing that one? I, I wasn't, but I can. Oh. I just need the lyrics. So. Oh, you don't? Wait, I'm going to check in my set list whether I actually... Yeah, I have it in my set list that you're going to sing it, so you have to. <laughs> You, <clears throat> you've spent many decades climbing giant shoulders of the past, learning how they built up each new fact upon the last. You've pushed up through adversity to, far, to see far in the distance the mountains of diversity, the range of all existence. You may look down on scrappy youth on other mountain ranges, Unaware that sacred fundamental knowledge changes Scorn them for their ignorance of what you always knew The basic facts you built upon that clearly still are true Ignoring any inkling that the ignorant is you The emerging path to sure ground can only reinforce It's just as well that you're around, they stumble and change course Yet to find their footing, and yet they urge you down Reaching of a slant light in the rock, you know it's sound. The ways they work at... It says the ways they work at at paving. I'm... Which of the ats should I not sing? The second one. I'll sing the first one. <laughs> the way they work at paving smooth are easy to dismiss. As slippery slopes that lead to dark and depths of the abyss. But fossilized analyses, deep rooted in some cost, will sink you into fallacies while other truths are lost. Some while digging deeper at receding cult will shout, while some discard their baggage to climb out. The smart will seek to find, the find will ride, the wise. The smart will seek to find, the one will, the wise. I can do this. <laughs> The smart will seek to find, the wise will find, and yet he'll seek. Close enough. <laughs> Continue climbing patiently through trials and critique. 
The wisest can move mountains to a more well-founded peak. I think that worked out really well, considering you didn't even know you were going to sing it. Uh, now, what's next on my playlist, um, set list? Okay, so, um, our maybe second or third date, I don't know, it was a weekend long recreational mathematics conference in the, in the, in England, because um, we're a little weird, um, but, uh, but love is not mathematics and it's hardly ever less than three rarely stops at man and woman, straight and gay, or you and me, churning contradictions, clogging tubes in the definery, the, the, the turning quantum LGBT qubits into binary. Every single Boolean's in every state at once, and even when the Boolean's not single, it's still unsettlingly odd, and when it's not odd, then it is not even even. Oh my god, it's never simple. Nothing ever seems to normalize. I missed the clever symbols in the system that I formalized, and this I do not understand. It's just too complicated. I'm very good at solving, so it must be who I dated. Yes, love is not mathematics, but forgive it all confusion. Don't avoid all the dramatics with the trivial solution. Its axioms are ill-defined, but may prove good or may prove well. If with your love, you're thrilled to find you never have to prove yourself. Um, so I mentioned that we went to this convention on our first date. Uh, it's called MarsCon and they have a comedy music track. Um, in 2019, we went there again before the cruise. And uh, Beth Kinderman has a song uh, called Stop Covering Hallelujah. And it's basically, it's a parody of um, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen uh, about the fact that that song is actually about fucking and a lot of people play it in churches and for Christmas and so on. Um, so we came on the cruise with that in our hands and we kept finding words that scanned to Hallelujah, including the, the, the meme of that cruise which was Purple Guava. Maybe you remember Joey sang a Purple Guava Hallelujah at the open mic. Um, since then, we have we have written a lot of hallelujahs, and there's about 35 of them on the YouTube. Uh, we're just going to do a few of them in honor of birthday day, which is tomorrow. Um, so, uh, yeah, on Joey's birthday, I sang this one. <laughs> the time has come to celebrate. Recurrence of a great first date It's Joey left the womb and came to Earth Day And made it better than before I hope you'll stay for many more So I can keep on singing Happy Birthday Happy Birthday Happy Birthday Happy Birthday recruited some some additional friends of ours and sang one for my birthday a few months later. This one was for the 40th, which is either 12 years ago or five minutes ago, depending on how you count the pandemic. But the pandemic lasted for 10 years, so you might as well be. But you're not. For 20 years, there we go. Your sense of humor can't be beat. If you like puns, then take a seat. They're awesome, whether serious or sarcastic. She fills us all with joy and mirth, so let's all celebrate her birth. The day marks 40 years of Angelastic.
Uh, so now we've kind of moved beyond the me writing poems and then Joey setting them to music. We're starting to find the music first or intentionally write songs. And um, this is one that Joey actually dreamed a tune and related to me and then I said some words to it. Um, it's called a cooperative game. Oh, how are we going to do this? Because we're both singing. Okay. <laughs> mostly just Joey again, which is great, because um, Joey's great. Um, so I, I don't know if maybe you've seen uh, Riley doing the um, Pale Blue Dot, uh, reading the Pale Blue Dot thing by Carl Sagan um, on the, at the open mic sometimes. Uh, I sent this to music, uh, well, to the tune of Somewhere Out There from American Tale, uh, and Joey's going to sing it. Contest, which I think a lot of people on this boat are familiar with. Um, and for the first round, the, the topic was to write a song based on a scene from a book or a movie. And uh, we wrote a song about a scene from the, the book um, The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester. Yay. Um, and uh, then we just even though it was not required that the songs be related to each other, for the next two rounds we also wrote songs about the Phantom Tollbooth. And uh, the, the third round, um, the, uh, the challenge was to write an uplifting song to sing for a graduation 
of dedication, bar mitzvah, funeral, baptism, or a similar event. Um, so we write a song um, that, it, that could be sung at the annual celebration that um, happens after the end of the book. And it basically summarizes basically every plot point of the book. Uh, so it's maybe a bit of a spoiler. But if you haven't read this book, it's so full of puns and wordplay. It doesn't matter if you know all of the plot points. Um, you maybe don't, won't even understand them uh, when we sing them. It's still worth reading the book afterwards. Um, and we're going to cooperate on this one too. So. Did, did, uh, I guess I find the lyrics.